sound off for Chesterfield. Chesterfield is best for you. First cigarette with premium quality in both regular and king size. Chesterfield brings you Dragnet. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a burglary detail. A wave of burglaries has broken out in your city. The thieves are fast. They're clever. Your job? Get them. Years ahead of them all. Chesterfield is years ahead of them all. The quality contrast between Chesterfield and other leading brands is a revealing story. Recent chemical analyses give an index of good quality for the country's six leading cigarette brands. The index of good quality table, which is a ratio of high sugar to low nicotine, shows Chesterfield quality highest. Chesterfield quality highest. Fifteen percent higher than its nearest competitor. Chesterfield quality highest. Thirty-one percent higher than the average of the five other leading brands. Yes, Chesterfield is first with premium quality in both regular and king size. Don't you want to try a cigarette with a record like this? Chesterfield. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Thursday, December 10th. It was cold in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of burglary detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Chief of Detectives Thad Brown. My name's Friday. We were on the way out from the office, and it was 10, 14 a.m. when we got to the Armstrong Schneider Jewelry Company, the manager's office. Can I help you? Yes, ma'am. Police officers, we'd like to see Mr. Armstrong. Oh, yes. Just a minute. The police officers are here. Yes, sir, right away. Will you go right in, please? Thank you very Thank much. You. Mr. Armstrong's office. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, but he's in a meeting. Won't you come in? Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Mr. Armstrong? Yes. It's my partner, Frank Smith. My name's Friday. How, How do you do? do? Won't you sit down? Thank you very much. Thanks. Would you like a cigarette? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks. I have a lighter. As you know, this firm is probably the foremost fine jewelry store on the coast. Yes, sir. I wonder if you'd tell us about the theft. Yes. Well, we discovered it this morning. About what time was that? Well, about 9.45. That's when we missed it. I guess the necklace was taken about 9. Must have been right after we opened. Could you give us a description of the piece, sir? Yes, I have it uh, right here. Got it from the insurance records. Have a drawing of it. We always have that done on high-priced items. Mm-hmm. Here you are. Thank you. Mm-hmm. What value do you place on the necklace? It's insured for $8,000. firm can't afford to take a loss like that. Could you tell us exactly how it was taken? Yes, I can. It was just after 9. We just opened the front doors. People had started to come in. <laughs> Lots of shoppers. Christmas, you know. Yes, sir. Well, this one couple came in, asked to see some of our more expensive necklaces. Henderson brought the tray out of the safe and showed the collection to the people. Henderson? Yes. He's the clerk who was waiting on the people. Oh. I uh, gave him his notice. I had to. Looks to me like carelessness. I wonder if we could talk to him. Yes, all right. Thank you. Miss Courtney, would you have Henderson sent in here, please? Yes, right away. What? No, tell him I'll call later. That's right. Have him leave the number and I'll call back. Right, yes. He'll be right in. All right, thank you. How long has this Henderson been working here? I'd have to check the employment records to be sure. Offhand, I think it's been about five years. Ever since we opened at this location, we used to have a store downtown, then we moved out here. Mm -hmm. Where did he work before then? Well, let me see. I think it was someplace up north. Mm, San Francisco, I believe. Yes, he worked in a store up there. Had excellent references. He's a good salesman. But you gave him notice, huh? Well, I felt it was the only thing to do. If he's getting careless, he has no business working in a store that deals with expensive merchandise. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yes? Send him right in. What? No, please tell him to call later. No, I'm not into anyone. No one but Sharon. 
My wife. Yes, sir. Come in. Do you want to see me, Mr. Armstrong? Yes, come right in, Henderson. These are police officers, Mr. Friday and Mr. Smith. This is Charles Henderson. How are you? Hi. How are you? They'd like to ask you some questions about the theft. Yes, sir. Anything I can do to help? Could you give us a description of the couple you waited on? Yeah, I think so. The man was about 35, maybe 40. About how tall was he? Well, maybe 5'11". Might have been 6 feet. I'd say he weighed about 155 pounds, something like that. Uh-huh. How about his coloring, his complexion? It was light. It looked like he'd been out in the sun, though. His nose was all sunburned. I notice it because you don't often see people with sunburns like that this time of the year. You know, December. Mm-hmm. How was he dressed, do you remember? He had a gray hat on, gray chalk-striped suit on, flannel blue shirt, maroon tie. Didn't see his shoes. He had on one of those... New round collars, though. You know, rounded here on collar points? Mm hmm. Was he clean shaven? No. No, he had a little mustache, one of those that looks like it's drawn on with an eyebrow pencil. Just a line, you know the kind. Uh huh. How about the woman? What'd she look like? There's a small woman, not much more than 5'2, little, about 100 pounds. Real pretty. She had dark hair and blue eyes, very fair. I noticed it because I thought at the time that maybe she dyed her hair. Mm hmm. Did she have any marks or scars you saw? No. No, I don't think so, no. How was she dressed? She was a little too overdressed, had a dress and a coat, had a jewel clip here on her dress. She looked kind of flashy, cheap, you know. I see. Anything about the way they talked and the accent, anything like that? No, nothing I can remember. Would you remember if either one of them wore glasses, maybe? No. The man, though, he had a kind of funny way of talking. What do you mean? Well, he sounded sort of like one of those pitch men on TV, you know, the kind that sell kitchen gadgets, things like that. Mm Mm-hmm. Could you tell us what happened, what they said when they came in, how they took the jewels? Yes, uh, they came in right after we opened and asked to see something in necklaces. Said they wanted to pay around 5000 mm. So I brought out the tray, but didn't find anything that they liked. And then I brought out the other tray. They looked at one of the necklaces. Beautiful thing, 8500 uh, You know, Mr. Armstrong, the emerald-cut diamond with the small sapphires. Yes, I know the one. Beautiful thing. Well, excuse me, can I use that ashtray a minute? Yeah, yeah thank you. I wonder if you'd go on, please. Oh, sure. Well, I brought out the other tray and showed them the uh, necklaces in it. They both looked for a long time. And then the woman said that she didn't think there was anything there she wanted. Mm-hmm. What was the matter? Didn't they care for our designs? No, it wasn't that, sir. They just didn't see anything they liked. So they moved back to the other tray. And then the woman said she'd found what she wanted. It was a small piece, three diamonds and four small rubies. Did they buy that? No, they said they wanted to think about it. They made a big thing about asking me if I thought that it would be sold before they could make up their minds. Mm-hmm. Well, I told them if they wanted to put a small deposit on it, we could hold it for them. Yeah. Man said he'd rather not do that. He said they'd know by this afternoon. At that time, there were several people in the store, Christmas shoppers, you know. Mm -hmm. Some of them were looking at a display of bracelets we had on the counter. I went over to them to see if there was anything I could do. You know, tell them that I'd get someone to wait on them. I understand. It's a foolish thing to do. I know that. I'm afraid it was. Yeah, I know now. Well, when I got back, the couple was leaving. They told me they'd be in this afternoon and let me know. Walked out of the store, and I stopped to help a gentleman that came in. When I turned back to the trays, I noticed that the necklace in the more expensive tray was gone. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to give us positive identification of these people if you ever saw them again? Yes, I'm sure I would. wonder if you can come downtown with us and look at some pictures, see if you can identify the thieves for us. Of course, if Mr. Armstrong has no objection. Not at all. You'd like me to come along, too? I don't think that'll be necessary right now. If there's anything we need, we can get in touch with you here, can't we? Yes, right here at my home. I can give you that number. All right, fine. Okay. Here it is. Thank Thank you, sir. Well, thanks very much. You ready to go? Yes, sir. I'll get my hat. Just a minute, Henderson. Yes, sir. As soon as you get through down there, come on back. Your job's waiting for you. All right, sir. I'd like to come back. Anything I can do to help, just let me know. All right, Mr. Armstrong. Not at all. I'll get my hat and meet you at the door. Right. Have you notified the insurance company of the theft yet, Armstrong? I have a call into them now. I'm expecting an agent from the firm any minute. Sure hope you can recover it. Yeah, sure. We'll do the best we can. An $8,000 necklace. How do you think they'll go about disposing of it? Break it up? Well, either that or leave it in one piece. That'll make it kind of hard to unload, won't it? $8,000? Not at their price. Ten thirty-seven a.m. We talked to the other people in the store. From them, we got verifying descriptions of the two thieves. 11.32 11.32 a.m., Frank and I took the clerk, Charles Henderson, down to the city hall and had him go through the mug books. We got out a local and an APB on the pair of thieves, and a description of the stolen necklace was prepared for the Daily Bulletin. The insurance company that underwrote the necklace got in touch with us and said that they were getting out printed circulars to jewelers throughout the country. The victim was unable to make an identification from the mug books. 
We had the M.O. of the theft run through the staff's office, but when the possibles were checked out, we had no new leads. Further interrogation of the owners and employees of the stores in the immediate vicinity of Armstrong and Schneider failed to turn up anything new. The theft was not a new one. For the past six weeks, there'd been a series of burglaries taking place out on Wilshire Boulevard. Most of them had been exclusive women's stores or jewelry shops. To date, all of them had been articles of small individual value, none that approached the value of the necklace taken from Armstrong and Schneider. In an attempt to apprehend the thieves, all of the usual avenues of sale of stolen goods had been checked. None of the precautions apparently did any good. The thefts continued. Another two weeks passed. In that time, the thieves hit three times, all in the same general area. The employees of the victimized stores were questioned. From the information we got from them, we could be certain that the suspects were the same ones we were after. On Tuesday, December 29th, Frank and I got back from checking a lead. Well, there's another one that went no place. Yeah, you want to check the book? Yeah, I'll get it. Anything there? Yeah, there's a call here from Alex Olson. Olson? Yeah, got a Dunkirk number. You know Olson? No, that name doesn't mean anything to me. Say what it's about. No, so just call him, because it's important. All right, give me the number, huh? Yeah. Here you go. What is this, 190? Is that a nine? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's a nine. You don't make nines very good. Slopey, can't write. Can I speak to Alex? Oh, Alex Olson. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. The hotel. Yeah. Hello. This Olson? Yeah. This is Friday. Police Department. You want me to call you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Sure, I remember. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure. We'd like to talk to you. Yeah. Now, we'll come over there. That's right. You want to give me the address? Just a minute. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Bye. Olson, he works for that carnival. You remember we talked to him last year? Says he wants to see us about some burglaries now. Oh, yeah, I remember. Really. Says he's in with the thieves. 11.26 a.m. We drove out to the address Olson had given me on the phone. We talked to the desk clerk at the hotel. He said that Olson had just moved in and that during the time he'd been there, Olson hadn't talked much to any of the other people in the place. The clerk gave us his room number and Frank and I went up to talk to him. Who is it? Joe Friday. Just a minute. Hi, come on in. Thanks. Hi. Right. Olson, this is my partner, Frank Smith. Oh, hello. hello. Yeah, I remember you. Sit down. Thanks. You want a drink? No, oh, thanks. No, oh, I gotta have one. What was it you want to talk to us about, Olson? Huh? What was it you wanted to talk to us about? Oh. Um. Oh, man. I'm a hangover. I really get him. Yeah, now let's get the point, shall we? What's on your mind? Oh, I, I'll tell you. I don't know why I drink so much. I feel terrible the next day. I always drink too much. All right, now look, Olson. Maybe you got a lot of time. We haven't. We didn't come over here to sit and watch you drink. Now get to the point. You said in the phone that you're in with a gang of thieves we're looking for. Now what about it? Oh. What I told you on the phone is true. It's all true. I, I'm glad to tell you. Get it over. Get it all out in the open. That's what I need to do. Get it all out in the open. You had any breakfast yet? No, I, I just got up before I called you. Is there any place around here you can get something to eat? Don't make no difference around here. Nobody knows me. I, I think there's a place down the street right next to the hotel. But what's all this about food? I think you'll feel better if you have something to eat, won't you? No, no wait a minute. You've had enough of that. Put it down. I don't want no food. All right, we do. Let's go. You guys are getting a little bossy, aren't you? We want to hear what you got to say. You keep hitting that bottle, neither one of us is going to make it. Come on, Phil. We'll buy you some breakfast. You got a coat? It's cold out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure glad you guys came. I'm glad to get this off my Wait a minute. Chest. Those dresses in there. Woman's clothes. Those belong to you? Oh, no. I'm just keeping them for a friend. Well, the label's on some of them here. They come from out on Wilshire, don't they? Yeah. You get a gold star. I'll tell you about that. That's part of the deal. You want to tell us now? Well, look, you made a deal about some coffee. Maybe it'll help me find my hands. Are you going to back out now? All right, let's go. We'll come back. Sure, you can come back. Take all the time you want to. Look, the dress is over. I got some other stuff you'll want to see, too. But come on, let's go. Uh, 
Let's walk down. Huh? Let's not take the elevator. It's too noisy. Murder. Mm -hmm. well, what's this other stuff you wanted to show us, Olsen? The jewelry. I got some of it in the dresser. It's cheap stuff. Nothing worth anything. It's cheap. Where'd you get the clothes and jewelry? Oh, Red asked me to keep them for him. Who? Well, he's the guy you want. He's the one that's engineering the thefts. He's the one. It's a real crumb. Big man. He's the one you want. I'd like to see you get him. How many other people working with him? Uh, three others. You know who they are? Sure, sure. I know the whole story, start to finish. I know the whole thing. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you all about it. Uh, well, let's go out the side way. All right. Now, where's this coffee shop? Oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, you sure you wouldn't like a belt? Before? No, and neither do you. Now, let's go. Okay, you're calling it. Preston's right down here, just a couple of doors. You know where this red is? Yeah, I'll tell you. He's the one you want. How about the woman who works with him? Oh, that's May. Red's not the guy who goes into the stores, though. A fellow that works that part of the operation is his brother-in-law, a guy named Hank. What was her name? May. Well, it's May. Is she the woman in the team? Yeah. Red wouldn't trust anybody else. Not him. He's a big man, you know. You don't believe it. You just ask Red. He'll tell you. Big man. Big bum. This is the place? Yeah. Uh, you positive? No, I guess you wouldn't. Booth in the back, all right? Yeah. Hey, Joe, it doesn't look like they got service in the booths. What do you want, Olsen? Well, it ain't what I want, but I'll settle for a cup of coffee. Mm. Joe? Yeah, that's all right for me. I'll get it and bring it back. Mm. Come on, Olsen, let's go back. Mm. Sit down. Mm. All right, now, suppose you start right at the beginning and tell me about it, huh? Who's Red? How do they work the operation? Where can we find them? Tell us everything. All right. Well, first off, Red's real name is Keith Jameson. They call him Red because he's got red hair, it figures. Yeah. What's he do for a living? He works for Carney. Most of the year we're on the road, and it's the off-season, so he's laying up in a trailer camp out in the valley. He doesn't do anything regular now. He just steal. Is he one of the owners of this carnival? No, he runs a pitch game. You know, rings and the pegs. If you play real good, you can win a quarter's worth of slum for five bucks. Mm -hmm. How about his wife? She travel with the show? Yeah, yeah, she travels. It ain't, it ain't a regular show, not Red's party. Just got a concession, you know. He goes with the show like a leech. He's been thrown out of a dozen carnies for crooked stuff. His brother-in-law's a dip when we're on the road. Picks pockets in the crowd around Red's place. He's gotten us all in a lot of trouble. No carny in the country will have us around anymore. Don't take him long to get wise to us. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's in on the burglaries with Red and his wife, is that it? That's right. He lists the stuff. How about his wife? Where does she fit in? Well, she's the distraction. You know, the one that comes up and asks questions, pulls the clerk away so Hank can lift the stuff. In case there's any trouble, Hank acts as lumber, too. What do you mean, lumber? Well, you know, muscle. He takes care of the guys that... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, can you give me a hand with that, huh, Frank? Yeah, here. Look at my thumb. Stuff splashed on it. Think it's blistered? No, it's good hot coffee in there. Hey, Arles. Oh, thanks. Come on, pass the sugar, will you? Yeah, here you are. Where do you fit into this, Olsen? Uh, no place, really. I'm just along for the ride. I think Red figures sometime the axe is going to fall and he wants my head under it. I usually hold on to the stolen stuff until Red finds a buyer. Does he use a fence? No, he pushes the stuff himself. He usually works on a tip. You know, if somebody wants to buy a piece of merchandise, Red meets him, sets up a deal. Uh-huh. You willing to cooperate with us all along the line on this thing? Sure, sure. I'll go along with you. You know where the necklace is that they lifted a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, yeah, Red's got it. He's looking for a buyer now. You think you can set up a meet for us? Yeah, if he thought you wanted to buy the piece, it could be done. Can you set up the meet? Sure, sure. I want to see you get him. Tell me something. How are you going to come out on this if we pick up Red and the others? What do you want out of it? I got my reasons. I got good reasons. Mm -hmm. You want to tell us what they are? Sure, I got no reason not to. G give me the sugar again. Right? Yeah. You see, Red figures he's going to make a sideshow character out of me next season. I'm not going to go that route. Yeah? What do you mean? Oh, you know, the wild man from Borneo sit in a pit all day and yell at the customers. Pitch like that always draws a big crowd. Red figures it'll be good for picking pockets. Yeah. You ought to know by now Red's out of his mind. Yeah. Wild man from Borneo. Even a leopard skin won't help look at me. Hmm. Yeah. I only weigh 105 pounds. You are listening to Dragnet, the authentic story of your police force in action. 
Chesterfield is best for you. Listen to Chesterfield's record. For a full year and two months, a doctor has been making regular examinations of a group of Chesterfield smokers, and he reports no adverse effects to the nose, throat, and sinuses from smoking Chesterfields. Don't you want to try a cigarette with a record like this? Chesterfield. First with premium quality in both regular and king size. Chesterfield. First choice with Young America, and that's from a survey of 274 colleges and universities. Try Chesterfields today. Remember, Chesterfield is America's best cigarette buy. Two twenty-four p.m. We continued to talk to Alex Olson. He told us what he knew of the operation of the thieves. We went back to his room and searched it thoroughly. We found several pieces of cheap costume jewelry and several of the stolen dresses. Most of the other things in his room were worthless, and as far as we knew, had not been stolen. We took him down to the city hall and had him checked through R&I. He had an arrest record showing several arrests for being drunk in a public place. We checked the name Keith Red Jameson through the files. There was no record on him. There was no record in the moniker file either. Jameson's brother-in-law and the two women were also checked out, but we found no previous criminal record for either of them. Communications were gotten off to Washington to check the possibility that the suspects might have records in other states. 4.40 p.m., we met in Captain Wisdom's office. Olson told us that he'd arrange a meeting for us with Red. While we listened on an extension phone, he called the suspect, told him that he had a buyer for the necklace. A meet was set up for the following morning at the entrance to Alvera Street. Red said that he'd have the necklace with him at the time. 5.37 p.m., Frank, Olson, and I drove out to the trailer camp in the valley. We checked the trailer that Red lived in and also the one his brother-in-law had. We got a good look at the car Red would drive to the meet, and then we arranged for a stake out on the trailer park. 8.23 p.m. The three of us drove back down to the city hall. You ain't going to try and take him at the meet, are you? We had not got around to that yet. Why? Well, you do, and it's going to point straight at me. You ain't going to put him away forever, you know. He's going to get out, and he's going to draw a straight line to me. I don't want that. i got to be protected. We'll take care of you. Don't worry about it. Oh, big deal. You'll take care of me. Well, how? That's what I want to know. How are you going to do it? We'll get him before he gets to the meet. Here you go in here. Look, tell me, how are you going to work it? We'll come up with a way. You ain't going to get near him in plain clothes. I'll tell you that right now. He'll spot you a mile away. Comes to cops, he's got eyes in the back of his head. You can't get anywhere near him in those clothes. Don't worry, we won't. He'll be picked up for something else. We'll find the necklace on him if he's got it, and you'll never know that's what we're after. Well, how are you going to work it? How? We'll be in uniform in a traffic car coming in from the valley. That might work, huh, Frank? Yeah, I think so. He's bound to make a mistake. When he does, we'll be there. Yeah, that would do it. You'll never figure out anything to do with that, never. Yeah, it ought to work. Yeah, that'll work good. Yeah. Uh, you guys wouldn't like No, we wouldn't. No booze. Okay. <laughs> I just noticed the bar across the street. I thought maybe you guys would like to stop there. I'd feel a little better about this if I had a drink. Just a little one. Come on now, bye. Huh? Sorry, Alex. We've got to take you over the main jail. You got to what? For the time being, we got to hold you. Oh, now, wait, it ain't the jail that bothers me, not being in jail. It's just that I hear it's pretty rough to get a drink over at the Gray Bar Hotel, you know. That's the only thing that bothers me. There's no room service there. Yeah, well, it'll all work out for you. Oh, I don't know. So I got mixed up in this thing. Seems like I got no choice in anything. It don't seem fair. I got no choice. DA's office will know what you did. It'll be marked down that way. Oh, I got no beef with you guys. You better take it easy with Red, though. Is that right? Yeah, he's got a gun. The following morning at 4.30 a.m., Frank and I were dressed in the uniform of traffic officers. We were parked two blocks from the trailer park in a traffic car. The meet with Red was scheduled for 9 a.m. The officers on stakeout at the trailer park told us that they'd seen no activity in Red's trailer the night before. From where we were parked, we could keep his car under constant surveillance. At 7.45 a.m., we saw the suspect and his wife come out of the trailer and get into the car. We followed them over to Ventura Boulevard and from there down Coinga Pass. We kept far enough behind them so that they'd have less chance of knowing that they were being followed. They turned by the freeway construction point and continued on down Coenga Boulevard. When they got to the corner of Yucca and Coenga, they made a mistake. They turned left from the wrong lane of traffic. Well, that's it. You want to hit the siren? Yeah. I got the light. He's going straight down Yucca, Joe. Yeah. Pull up behind him, huh? Right. Okay, he sees us. He's pulling over. I'll cover the other side. Watch yourself. Right. What's wrong, officer? I didn't do anything. See your operator's license, please? Sure, it's in my pocket. I'll get it. You want to get out of the car, please? 
But I don't have to get out to show you my driver's license. I'd like to have you get out of the car. Don't argue with him, Red. Do what he says. What's all this about, anyway? What do you stop me for? You made an illegal left turn back there at Coinga. Illegal? Oh, you got the wrong guy. See that guy in front of me? He jumped the light something awful. He's the guy you ought to be after. He's the one, not me. All right, move over by the car. What? Over by the car. Now put your hands up there. No, against the car. I don't know what you mean. Now come off it, Jameson. You know what we mean. All right, Jameson, on your feet. What are you doing? You got no right to beat him up like that. Big thing for making a left turn. What are you guys trying to prove? Just wait until the papers get this. We got friends, you know. All right, lady, friends. take it easy. I won't take it easy. Man makes a mistake, and you cops act like you were the judges. You got no right to treat a citizen like that. Here, Frank, you'll hold this. Yeah. 38 call. You play rough, don't you, Red? Ah, shut up. What's this, Red? You leave that alone. That's mine. Doesn't concern you. Necklace, Joe? Yeah. So it's a necklace. What's that prove? You got nothing on us. Write out the ticket for the left turn. Let us go. That's all you got. You got a permit for this gun? No. This necklace is stolen. You know that, don't you? I don't know anything about it. I'm not going to say anything until I see a lawyer. Nothing. I knew this would happen. Always knew it about you. You're yellow. Willing to take a chance as long as you ain't going to be nailed. Let something go wrong and right away you start screaming for a lawyer. Poor excuse for a man. You took a chance and you lost. Well, don't be a coward about it. You got no excuse. None in the world. You got no excuse at all. Well, that makes you even, lady. Huh? Neither of you. The story you have just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On April 15th, trial was held in Department 87, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. Now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you, George Fenneman. I sure hope you were listening real close to what George Fenneman had to say tonight, because it proves what I always tell you. You can't beat the premium quality you get in Chesterfield, regular or king size. I'd like you to try Chesterfields. They're much milder, and they have a wonderful taste. <laughs> Henry Donald Swenson, Anna Catherine Swenson, and May Ruth Jameson were tried and convicted of five counts of burglary in the second degree. They received sentence as prescribed by law. Burglary in the second degree is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of not less than one nor more than 15 years. Keith Walter Jameson was tried and convicted for receiving stolen property on five counts and received sentence as prescribed by law. Receiving stolen property is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period not to exceed 10 years. Because of his cooperation, Alex Robert Olson received a lighter sentence and was placed on probation. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Brasher. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Stacey Harris, script by John Robinson, music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. For a million laughs, tune in Chesterfield's Martin and Lewis show, Tuesday on the same NBC station. And sound off for Chesterfield. Either regular or king size, you'll find premium quality Chesterfields much milder. Chesterfield is best for you. Chesterfield has brought you Dragnet transcribed from Los Angeles. Now, new Fatima has the tip for your lips. Fatima tips of perfect cork. King size for natural filtering. Fatima quality for a much better flavor and aroma. So remember, new Fatima has the tip for your lips. Fatima, see how smooth they are. Remember, Fatima is made by the makers of Chesterfield, Liggett and Myers, one of tobacco's most respected names. (laughs) 